Well, if you own a Webley Mark VI, whether it's been shaved for 45 ACP or the cylinder is unaltered and it still fires 455 Webley, uh, you're aware that ammo can be difficult to get. You shouldn't use normal 45 ACP loads in a shave cylinder. And 455 Webley can be downright impossible to get your hands on lots of times during the year. So I'm going to share my reloading techniques and favorite loads for both the 455 Webley and the 45 ACP. And uh, we'll load some up, we'll shoot them, we'll see how it goes. Here in part one of this series, we're going to concentrate on reloading the 455 Webley cartridge. And we'll pick up with the 45 ACP and 45 auto rim for shave cylinders in part two. Well, we want to get a baseline for reloading. So we're going to shoot Fiocchi's factory ammunition. This is 262 grain lead round nose ammunition. And we're going to try to get a baseline for accuracy and we'll chronograph it for velocity to see what we're trying to achieve with our, our hand-loaded ammunition. Well, we've got the Webley loaded up with the Fiocchi factory ammo and we're going to shoot it off the bench at 25 yards and get an accuracy baseline. Well, the Fiocchi factory ammo gave us a two and three quarter inch group, which is nothing to be ashamed of. Well, we're going to take the Fiocchi factory ammo and run it over the chronograph now to see what kind of velocity we're getting. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera, but Fiocchi rates their ammo at 850 feet per second. Now, I'm here to tell you, I have never gotten numbers like that off Fiocchi Factory 455 Webley. But I've always been using older ammo. This ammo is factory fresh. In fact, this is so fresh, the ink's hardly even dry in the box. So maybe it's a little zippier than the stuff that's been sitting around. Anyway, we will see. All right, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. But the Fiocchi ammo burns very dirty. That's lots of unburned powder. Um, now, part of the reason for that, I think, is because they're using un uncrimped bullets, just, uh, just a taper crimp. But that's a sign that pressure is too low to really ignite the powder. And that's not so good. And that's why we're getting such low velocities. Look, before we get started on hand loading, let's talk a little bit about the cartridges that are used in the 455 Webley Mark VI. Before World War II, the Webley Mark VI that you see here was supplanted by the 38 caliber Webley Mark IV as the main British handgun. Uh, then after World War II, Britain went to the high-power 9mm automatic. So after the war, a lot of Webley Mark VI's were declared obsolete and were imported into this country. But the Webley ammunition was not very common here. So what a lot of the importers did was to shave the cylinder. And you can see in this example uh, where the serial numbers are cut off. And that's very common. It's just one of the key things to see about a, a shaved cylinder. Um, and these things were shaved so they could accommodate 45 ACP cartridges in moon clips, like the type you see here. But that brought on a whole host of problems all its own. Here in part one of the series, we're going to concentrate on the 455 Webley case, uh, which you'll see all the way over to the right. The other two cases are in the center, the 45 ACP, and to the left, the 45 Auto Rim. And what I want you to see is that they have quite a bit more case capacity than the 455 Webley. And we'll talk about 
what problems that causes when we get to the 45 ACP section. But in the 45, 455 Webley reloading area, what you've got to remember is this tiny case with a big bullet means that your seating depth and your overall length has a big impact on pressure. And the Webley Mark VI can handle about 15,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. Earlier Webleys can only handle about 13,000, but that's what we're dealing with, and it makes reloading complex. Even the 45 ACP ammunition's easier to get a hold of, uh, the brass anyway. Uh, if you have a shaved Webley, you can still shoot 455 Webley ammunition itself, and, and in my experience, this ammunition, if it's loaded right, is extremely accurate. And all you need to do if you have a shave cylinder is take a 45 ACP full moon clip and a Dremel Moto tool with a sanding head on it and open up those, uh, those clip openings so that it can accommodate the 455 Webley. And if you do that, you can shoot those 455s right in your shaved gun, and I do it all the time. It's, it's a great shooting round. So if we're loading actual 455 Webley ammo in the Mark II case, uh, here's my procedure for that. I use 6.8 grains of blue dot powder, which I like using because it allows me to have basically a full density load. In other words, 100% of the case underneath the bullet is loaded with powder. It keeps the powder from shifting around back and forth. So. Here's the way we do this. Uh, I'm going to chuck this into the press. I'll chuck this one into the press. And we'll go up and that will case mouth expand it. At the same time, I've got to drop a powder charge. And we're, we're operating in kind of tight quarters here, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm using a Uniflow powder measure. And I've got it set for about 6.6, 6.5. Uh, grains of powder. So I'm going to pour that into my digital scale. And then I'm going to use this Redding powder trickler. And the way this works is there's basically a screw inside of here. And when you turn this knob, it spins that auger. And it allows one flake of powder at a time to trickle out. And I'm going to do that until it reads 6.8 uh, grains on my digital scale. So I'll we'll just put it right over the pan, and I'm just going to turn it. And we got to get some powder to get down to the end of it because I haven't. Okay, so here we go. Powder's starting to come out, and you got to watch the scale because we're only going up by tenths of a grain here. Okay, so now I've got 6.8 grains, and that's what I want. And I load all of my actual Webley cases this way because this case is so short, and we're putting a pretty big bullet in it, uh, that you, you can really go over pressure on it. And um, I want to be very careful the powder charge I get in here. I want to be sure it's exactly right. I don't want to go over by two-tenths of a grain uh, you know, which almost any powder measure can throw you off by that much from, from throw to throw. Right, so we're going to weigh them all, and we're going to put them in. So I'm just going to drop this, if you can see. we got the funnel on here. I'm just going to drop that in. And my phone is ringing. Okay, sorry for that interruption. So, now we've got this. Let's see if I can show you. So that's 6.8 grains of blue dot powder in there. And there's just about enough room to seat that 255 grain bullet that we're going to top it with. Right here. So, I'm just going to drop this in the container. Uh, I'm going to charge up 50 cases like that. And then we'll top them off with bullets. And that's all she wrote. Then we'll be ready to shoot. The Fiocchi factory bullet is a 262 grain round nose bullet that has a hollow base. It's 4.4 4 
0.54 inches in diameter. And uh, it has almost no crimp groove at all. In fact, the cases are not roll crimped in the Fiocchi ammo. They are taper crimped, which, which I think leads to poorer performance. Uh, also, this stuff is dead soft. As you can see from this bullet that I shot against Evil Roy, it doesn't shatter the way hard bullets do. It just mushrooms and drops. Uh, now, what I'm using is a hard cast 255 grain. 0.454 inch diameter bullet that's a lead semi wide cutter. It's an Elmer Keith style and it has a nice crimp uh, groove. And we are, in fact, going to give this a very robust crimp. Well, the last step in the process is to top off the fired cases with bullets. And the, the Webley bore is actually 0.454. Uh, just like a 19th century 45 Colt. So I use these .454, you know, Keith style. Let's get her up here. Semi-wide cutter bullets. They weigh 255 grains, and they work outstanding in these Webley loads, which, which are very accurate. So I'm going to load these guys up. Got the cases are filled with powder. Case mouth is already expanded. We did all that in the last step. I'm just going to seat them up here and send it home. And we've got a completed 455 Webley round. And, and hopefully you can see on here I put a pretty strong roll crimp on it. And that helps me to get complete ignition of the powder. Uh, when you, you look inside the bore of a Webley that's been firing Fiocchi ammo you'll see lots of unburned powder. You don't see any inside of mine. And the pressures stay very safe. So I'm just going to load up the rest of these and then we can go take them out to the range. Now it's time to see how our hand-loaded ammo compares to the Webley factory ammo. It's time to run our hand loaded 455 Webley over the chronograph. Okay, as you can see, it's 695.2. We are already getting much higher velocities than the Fiocchi factory ammo, though we're still lower than. Uh, cartridges of the world or, or Fiocchi's box says the velocity should be. But this is more in line with what you can expect from a well-loaded Webley Mark VI. Well, for those of you who like to go to the answer in the back of the book, this chart shows the stats on every round tested. Now the best group I got with my 455 Webley hand loads was half an inch. Uh, and that was probably a fluke. 
but most of the groups I shot with this load were under two inches, so it is quite good. Um, and you can see the results of the other loads in the next video. We'll be talking about 45 ACP and 45 auto rim loads for the Webley.